Alright guys, today we're going to be talking about Hinduism, and we're going to be looking at this religion through the eyes and the lens of a Christian. So, let's begin with the basic facts. What are the origins of Hinduism? Most scholars believe Hinduism started somewhere between 2300 BC and 1500 BC in the Indus Valley, near modern day Pakistan. But many Hindus argue that their faith is timeless and has always existed. Within this religion, who do they necessarily worship? Although there are millions of gods in Hinduism, these are some of the main ones. Rama, the god responsible for the creation of the world and all living things. Vishnu, the god that preserves and protects the universe. Shiva, the god that destroys the universe in order to recreate it. And Krishna, the god of compassion, tenderness, and love. So right there, we can already see that in Hinduism, people believe in many gods. And a Christian's automatically going to be like, there aren't many gods, there's only one god. No, there are many gods with a little g, but there is only one god with a big g. But anyways, where would someone worship if they were to follow this religion? In Hindu worship, which is known as puja, it typically takes place in a temple. If you go to Google Images right now and top in Hinduism temples around the world, it will blow your mind at how magnificent and complex these buildings really are. Like they look crazy, but just because a building is beautiful doesn't mean that it is holy or righteous, AKA the Vatican, but that's for another video. Let's move on to the creation story of Hinduism. Now, Hinduism holds that the world is created many times over and over again, and not just once and for all. Further, this universe is considered to be just one of many other universes and other forms of life that exist on many planes. Let's move on to the two different creation stories. The first one is the world is said to have come into existence because of the timeless one. Having become bored being the only being in existence, it split itself into a variety of forms and manifestations basically the material world and all of its being, so that through them, it could experience a loving and playful relationship with itself. So in Hinduism, the first creation story tells us that this God, male nor female, split itself, and now it is feeling itself and recreating these relationships within itself, and it's experiencing what it feels like to be them, but as different creatures. I don't know if that makes sense, but... The second creation account from the Vishnu says that Vishnu was lying on an ocean of milk atop the serpent Sesha, and it sprung a lotus from his navel that contained the god Brahma. Having been sprung from Vishnu's navel, Brahma creates all living beings, as well as the sun, moon, planets, etc., and a number of other gods and demigods. So this creation story doesn't really make sense to me at all, and it just kind of sounds like people were at a campfire and they just made this up. So as you can see, both creation stories from Hinduism are very different, yet very odd and weird. But I guess it's just weird to me because I'm a Christian. But let's talk about the end of the world. What does Hinduism believe about the end of the world? Hinduism offers a version in which Vishnu returns to battle evil as a figure on a white horse. In the book of Revelation, it sounds like something very similar. But the Brahma gives birth to the world, Vishnu protects it, and Shiva destroys it. When it is time for the world to come to an end, a 100 year drought will kill many of the world's creatures. Vishnu will then transform into the god Rudra and enter the sun. The sun will increase in heat until all the water on earth will steam, boil, and dry up. The earth will then be cleansed in fire. Then Shiva, as the god Rudra, will blow great clouds together and sheets of rain will swamp the earth for 1,000 years. With the universe in a state of watery chaos, Brahma will create the new world. Now, as we can see, Hindu eschatology directly contradicts biblical teachings regarding the end times. For example, in the book of 2 Peter 3.10, it says, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away like a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Revelation 21.1 says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. This signifies an end. It doesn't signify 
a continuous cycle of life and death. This shows that there was a beginning and an end. Now, in conclusion, here are the three reasons why you should not follow Hinduism, especially if you're a Christian. The first reason is the fact that they believe in multiple paths to heavens through their gods and reincarnation, etc. Jesus tells us in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Not except through this God, not except through that God, except through me and only me. This is why, not to get off track, but this is why when you argue with a Muslim or debate with a Muslim, they'll say, oh, no, 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 we believe in the same Jesus. No, we don't. Our Jesus is the Son of God who literally came to save humanity. The Jesus that you believe in is just a prophet who didn't die for the sins of the world. And yeah, it's not the same Jesus. But let's move on. The second reason not to believe is the fact that they believe in reincarnation. Hindus believe in the doctrines of samasara, the continuous cycle of life, death, and reincarnation. And they also believe in karma, the universal law of cause and effect, which I somewhat believe in that too. I don't believe it to a certain extent because I think that evil things happen to good people and very good things happen to bad people. And I believe that this is just because Satan is the prince of the world and that the new heaven hasn't came yet. But anyways, Hebrews 9.27 says, And just as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes the judgment. It doesn't talk about a continuous cycle. And just as it is appointed for man to die once, not 10,000 times. In the book of Ecclesiastes it says, And the dust returns to the earth as it was, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. The Spirit returns to God who gave it, because we know that the Lord possesses and owns all souls. In Psalm 78, 39, He remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passes and comes not again. It doesn't say a wind that passes and passes and passes. It says a wind that passes and comes not again. And lastly, John 5, 28. Do not marvel at this, for an hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and come out, those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. This shows that we have one life on earth, and however you choose to live it, the decisions you make now, you will reap the consequences and the benefits in the afterlife. And the last reason, the third reason why you should not follow Hinduism is because the creation and the end story in Hinduism doesn't align with the Bible even a little bit. There might be little sprinkles of truth in it, but it's not even close to being the same. We can see that the end and the beginning stories in the Bible just don't align with Hinduism at all. So again, the three main reasons are number one, they believe that there are multiple paths to heaven, which we know that's not true. Number two, they believe in reincarnation. That is not biblically accurate at all. It's nowhere in the Bible. And number three, their creation and end stories don't align with biblical teachings. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want me to talk about another religion, comment below, like and subscribe. Peace out.